Hey everybody, welcome back to Next Play Records. I'm Andy, and I have a video for you today, which will be the entry into 45 RPM Audio Files YouTube page. Uh, Michael from Germany, uh, his contest is to celebrate his 600 subscribers, and I think it's been less than a month, obviously, and I think that in that time, he is over, he's more than doubled his subscribers, so he's well over 1,200, I believe, I haven't checked uh, but last time I looked, he was he had he had uh, added tons of subscribers since he uh, opened this contest up for the month um, to celebrate 600 subscribers. So very fast growing VC channel, and one of my favorite to to watch because he's always showing high quality jazz records, lots of music matters, uh, even some of the SRX. Um, so he just does, he doesn't just show 45 RPM audio file records. He shows any audio file record. I mean, he has MoFi, tons of Bob Dylan, and um, bands outside of jazz that put out audio, audio file records. But for me, I love watching his channel. He's he's a laid back guy. Um, he is very knowledgeable again, and and has tons of great records to show. So I enjoy it. I appreciate the opportunity to get in this contest, and uh, I'm gonna get right to it. There's four categories he wants you to show um, for this. And the first one is your best sounding record. And so I have, um, I'll start by saying I don't have an audio file set up for my sound system. I have a lower end Fluence turntable that has a built-in amp. And to me, it's humble. It's great. You know, it, it's exactly what I need for the for the location I keep my music. And um, the Fluence is such a good quality product for a, for a good price that uh, I was happy to get that. And I I have two bookshelf speakers coming out off of it, Edifier bookshelf speakers, which are about a hundred bucks, and um, they sound great. And I and I have Music Matters Jazz. I have some MoFi. I have some obviously tone poets and and other great sounding pressings of, of original lps and i have no complaints so if you're set up to have a music room and 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 a budget that you're willing to spend on the awesome hi-fi equipment by all means i know that it's going to sound better but for what i have and the space that i use and um how often i listen to music and I love to include my family, my, my wife and kids with that. I have it in the kitchen, which is open into our living room. So, I mean, I can play it um, and not blast them out of the house, you know. But the crispness, the sound from the Fluence turntable, good stylus on that thing. Great uh, tone arm, belt driven, uh, internal amp straight to some good bookshelf speakers. And it sounds great. So for me... Um, I would love to listen to some of these music matters and tone poets and other audiophile pressings on a unreal system, but I can't imagine it sounding uh, a ton better than what I get out of these music matters pressings. So best sounding records. Uh, I guess the limitations of my sound system probably make this tough on me because anything that's uh, audiophile pressing is going to be sounding perfect, I think. So I basically had to pick between, out of my Music Matters Jazz collection, and I picked two records that I feel like are the best sounding ones. And that goes to the music too, not just the pressing. So the first one I'm gonna show is Music Matters Jazz Pressing of Sonny Clark, Sonny's Crib. And this sounds so powerful. Um, the the players on this record are unbelievable and the and the songs are all just killers cookers and uh on here you've got donald bird on the trumpet curtis fuller on the trombone john coltrane on the saxophone paul chambers on the bass art taylor on the drums sonny clark on the piano so an all-star lineup uh anybody that knows the music matters jazz pressings are audiophile um this is one of my best sounding lps in my whole collection um mint near mint obviously bought it new so there's no issues at all with it. And um, just since I have it out, I'm gonna show some of these gatefold photos off while we're at it. We got old Sonny there. Uh, 
I mean, when when John Coltrane kicks in on his first solo on the title track of Sonny's Crib, it blows you away. I mean, if I had some big louder speakers, I'm sure it would be do even more. I, I listened to it at my brother's house who has a little better system and it's so powerful. It, that is definitely one of my um, best sounding records. So, Sonny's Crib. The next one I have in this category, I'm just gonna show two. Uh, Michael had said to show one or two. So uh, I'm gonna show my second one is Another Music Matters and it's Lee Morgan's Tomcat. This record is just uh, on fire. Lee Morgan on the trumpet, Jackie McLean on the saxophone, Curtis Fuller again on the trombone, McCoy Tyner on the piano, Bob Cranshaw on the bass and Art Blakey on the drums. So, the highlights on this one are definitely Lee Morgan on every song, but the crispness and the um, coolness of the Art Blakey drum solos in this on this record, they blow me away. So Tomcat, In a Tie with Sonny's Crib as my best sounding records. And inside here, it's just a beautiful cover, look at that. And another great, set of photos mm. love it love it um the next category the second category he wanted to see is um live records so your best sounding or favorite live record this was a no-brainer for me i don't have enough live records i've started to really like those lately um but mine will be let's go ahead and take it out of the sleeve a lot of people say best live recording ever. What a jam session. Allman Brothers. The Allman Brothers Band, live at Fillmore East. I believe this is a 1971 recording. Sounds so good. Um, there's a picture from the concert. Now, the only thing I would say on this is uh, some of my favorite all my brother's songs weren't played this night, but uh, you got Statesboro Blues, uh, Done Somebody Wrong, Stormy Monday, You Don't Love Me, a 19-minute jam session right there on side two, uh, Hot Lana, being from Georgia, I love that one, Hot Lana, uh, five minutes, and then In Memory of Elizabeth Reed for 13 minutes on side three, and then the highlight for me, side four, 23-minute long jam session live at the peak, at their prime, uh, the Allman Brothers play Whipping Post. So this live recording, this live record is definitely my best sounding live record, my favorite live record in my collection. The third, as the third category we have today for this contest is a special LP. So maybe one of your prize possessions, I think is how he put it. Um, and that's going to be George Strait, Holding My Own. This is the most rare of his records. This is the most valuable of his records. Um, this is a prized possession to me because George Strait has always been, since I was a little kid, my favorite music artist. And I was really happy when I found this, and I found it for a really, really good deal, um, just to make an offer on, on eBay. But um, So this is, my, this is my prized possession. It's one of my most valuable records sitting at about $75 in value, <clears throat> in value. but uh, this is 1992 George Strait um, on MCA, holding my own. The, the early 90 country records are um, pretty valuable just because, you know, it was about the end of the vinyl pressing heyday for a while, so they're more rare. Uh, I believe this was a club release, but there's my prize position, old George Strait. The last category, the last category he wanted to see is an album you would love to see remastered or reissued. Okay, and this one was a tough, tough one for me, but, uh, and I don't have the CD available and I don't have a, an original record because there never was one. And this could be a lot of, this, the answer to this could be a lot of things, but I'm going to go with what, what, um, you for for a long time was my favorite Christian band, and they only did one LP 
um, and it was a reissue of their very first album, and uh, which is Third Day. Okay, Third Day, get a little closer. Oops. Third Day. Okay, their first album was self-titled Third Day, and they did a they did press it on vinyl as a 10-year anniversary. So I think it came out in 95. So in 2005, there's an LP pressing of Third Day, Third Day. And uh, it's, I mean, it. you can get it, but it's going to be over $100. And so what I would like to see for Third Day is to put out on vinyl their greatest hits. And so this one would be my favorite one. This is Third Day Chronology, Volume 1, which would be their, the greatest hits from their first five albums. So if that were to be pressed, reissued on vinyl, I'd be the first one in line to buy it. Um, I love their music. Uh, again, it was my favorite Christian band for a long, long time. Um, but that would be a, an LP that I would love to see pressed. And uh, well, that's the four categories he needed to be in the contest. So I really hope y'all go to his channel, enter this. I think we have a couple days. It's till the end of the month. Um, but a uh, great YouTube page, 45 RPM audio file. Go check them out. And until next time, keep spinning that next play.